Week 3, Quarter 4, Revolutions. Lesson 1, Introduction to Revolutions. What does a revolution mean? A revolution is a complete change in either a culture or a government caused by normal people. So for example, you might have a revolution to change a monarchy where a king rules and the normal people have no power to a democracy where the normal people, the everyday regular people, vote for their leaders instead of having a king or queen. How do you have a revolution? So a revolution can happen a few different ways. People can have a revolution by protesting, boycotting, meaning not buying things if the money goes to the people in power, or going to war. So let's look at these pictures as an example. This is an example of protesting. This is where you gather a group of people and you take to the streets and maybe you hold up signs with a message that is important to you. Or maybe you shout chants like Black Lives Matter, Stop Climate Change, or anything else that matters to you. You send the message you think is important by standing together with a group of people and trying to find ways to make your message heard or seen. There's also boycotting. So for example, many of you have seen the Wendy's fast food restaurant over by our high school. This fast food restaurant got into trouble a few years ago um, for various reasons. Some of it was related to workers' rights. Some of it was related to the way they were sourcing their food. So people might say, hey, let's boycott Wendy's. Do not buy Wendy's. If you buy Wendy's food, you are giving money to the owner of that company that is a bad person. Or you might go to war. All of you are familiar with war. War is fighting with other countries or other groups of people using a military. You can either create your own military, which is called a militia, where it's normal people that decide to fight, or it might be the military of uh, an entire country. Now, if you're having a revolution, again, let's look at that word, revolution, revolution, you are probably not going to use the military of your government because they are going to be against you. However, you will probably use a militia to go to war. So why do revolutions happen? Well, revolutions happen for a number of reasons. Revolutions can happen because of exploitation, as we can see in this picture here. Billionaires use the labor of people that they pay very low wages to, and they get lots of money and power from it. Inequality. Inequality is a part of exploitation. Maybe no representation in the government or culture or unfair representation. We can see an example of that here in this picture that I have included at the bottom. Let me move my screen. Okay, so as you can see here, white males, males meaning men, make up the overwhelming majority in Congress. The US Congress is the legislative branch of the government. They are the people that create the laws. So the people that create the laws are mostly white men. White men are only 32% of Americans. However, they make up 75% of the House of Representatives and they make up 79% of the Senate. So on average, white men are only 32% of America. But white men make up, on average, 77% of the U.S. Congress. They make up 77%
of the people that are in charge of creating our laws. So this is not fair representation. There is very little representation for people who are women, for people who are people of color, meaning other races. This is especially not fair to women of color. There are oftentimes not enough resources for all people or limited opportunities for all people. This could also result in a revolution. So maybe there's not enough food. Maybe there's not enough jobs for all the people. And finally, maybe there's violence. Violence can cause a revolution to happen if the people in power are not doing anything to stop that violence. Now, if we go up here, this is our revolutions timeline. So we are going to learn about five different revolutions in this class. We are going to learn about the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, the Mexican War of Independence, and the Venezuelan War of Independence. So the American Revolution happened first in 1775 CE to 1783 CE. Next was the French Revolution in 1788 CE to 1789 CE. Then we had the Haitian Revolution from 1791 CE to 1804 CE. Then we have the Mexican War of Independence, 1810 CE to 1821 CE. Finally, last, we have the Venezuelan War of Independence from 1810 CE to 1823 CE. Now let's talk about your assignments for this week. The first thing you are going to do is you are going to do a picture and primary source prediction of the different revolutions we will be learning about. So you are going to look at pictures from the different revolutions. Some of these are primary sources, meaning that they were paintings created during or right after that time period by people that were there. And then, finally, you will complete a close reading titled, You Say You Want a Revolution. This one will be about the first two revolutions, the American Revolution and the French Revolution. Then next week, you will read about Haiti, Mexico, and Venezuela in another close reading. So let's start by explaining the picture and primary source predictions. So. When I open up this assignment, I'm going to read the instructions. After watching this week's video, which if you are listening to this right now, this is the video I'm talking about. Look at the pictures below. Write two sentences in the format of I see, so I think for each set of pictures or primary sources. This requires you to describe what you see. Then use what you see to guess what will happen as we learn about revolutions. So you should complete this before you move on to the close reading. This is a very important step in your thinking to make predictions. So let's go ahead and let's take a look here. Examine both pictures. I see, so I think. So for picture set A, I see a man looking at a sign that says tax on T. I see a soldier with a different color. So I think the soldier is for the government in power. I see the man looking at the sign about taxes on tea. So I think the man is not happy about paying taxes on tea. I see a man on a horse. I see a different row of soldiers with blue coats. So I think they are different soldiers from the red soldier. So I think the man on the horse is a leader of the other group of people. Whatever you think based on the pictures you see here, I want you to include below. So you have picture set A, picture set B, Picture set C, picture set D, 
and picture set E. You are going to complete all of these for full points. Now the other thing you need to do is after you have completed that, you need to read this article here. You say you want a revolution. This explains why revolutions started to happen, how they spread, and it gives details on the first two, the American Revolution and the French Revolution. Let's go ahead, let's just read the questions out loud. What two movements caused revolutions to happen? The two movements that caused revolutions to happen were, okay, so I go up here and I have to read through these three paragraphs to find my answer. What did Enlightenment philosophers believe in? Okay, so again, I go back up here, I read the first three paragraphs to find what did the Enlightenment philosophers believe in? So if you remember from class, um, we studied the Enlightenment philosophers right before we left for a spring break slash our coronavirus pandemic. So tap back into that prior knowledge. Think to yourself, what did Locke, Rousseau, Voltaire, what did those guys believe in? And think about what you're seeing in this article today. Then you're going to move on to the next section. So this section describes how those ideas spread and it describes the American Revolution. So you need to answer these two questions. What did the British government do that made the colonists angry? The British government explained here, what did they do? So you'll have to read, let's see here, roughly one, two, three, four paragraphs here to find out why were the American colonists angry at the government of Great Britain. What country was created from the North American colonists revolution? The country created from the North American colonists revolution was, again, read this set of paragraphs here. I'll tell you this much. You're going to find your answer to number four in the second half of these paragraphs. So read what I have highlighted here to find out which country was created. Now you're going to read about the revolution in France. So why were the poor people of France angry? The poor people of France were angry because blank read from here to here. You only have two paragraphs to read for this one. How did the people of France change their government? The people of France changed their governments by blank. Okay, so you're going to need to read and then answer that question, number six. The people of France changed their government by blank. What did they do to stop the monarchy that was in place before. After you've completed all of those, you're going to turn it in for this week, and that's all we have until next week. Do not forget you have a weekly meeting on either Wednesday or Thursday, depending on which class hour you are in. You are required to join those class meetings because we discuss content and we practice English together um, when we discuss the content. And it's very important that you learn the academic language associated with history. So that way, um, as you move through high school, that language becomes easier. You can apply it in real life. And some of you might go to college. Um, if you go to college, this information, this language is going to be extremely important for you to practice. If you have any questions, please text call or email me. Thank you guys, have a great week.